producer. Let us now welcome the finalists from Division B, Catalyst Consulting. The team will have five minutes to set up. So what the crap? My name is Felix and these are my colleagues, Sophia, Ronald and Pamela, and we are Catalyst Consulting. We are here today to deliver our insights and analysis into how DKSH can continue to provide that trusted link between clients and markets. And this is especially important within the ever-changing environment of Asia, particularly due to e-commerce. However, first let's look at how DKSH has actually achieved its market leading position today. DKSH's value proposition is underpinned by three key facets. It has an unmatched scale and scope which allow it to pass on economies of scale to its clients. Secondly, it has deep consumer insights which allow it to drive sales in different regions and markets. And finally, an embedded culture of entrepreneurialism allows it to adapt and change as the markets change. However, this case has asked us to focus on consumer goods and e-commerce. We see e-commerce affecting particularly the last four segments of the value chain. There are new marketing channels and new communication messages required to communicate with customers. Additionally, with distribution and logistics, challenges in infrastructure make it difficult to receive payments and also to distribute the actual goods. Finally, there is an increased recognition of the importance of after-sales services for brands in emerging markets. Additionally, there is an increased necessity due to the increased competition to receive market feedback from clients. And this increased competition also means that our clients need to focus on their core competencies to compete, which means that DKSH must provide those insights for the client. Today we are recommending three key strategies that address the latter three segments of this value chain. The first is an expansion of marketing and sales services through acquisition. The second is a centralized distribution network that leverages e-commerce's properties. And finally, with this distribution network, we are facilitating greater after-sales services for our clients. 
All these three strategies will also continue to generate consumer insights and data, which we will then leverage to provide further analysis and research for our clients. Sophia will now run you through how exactly we are going to integrate e-commerce into your marketing and sales offering. Thank you, Felix. So what makes e-commerce so exciting for marketing and sales? Let's look at the key market trends. What we see is that in Asia, there is a very already widespread use of social media, where one in three Thais have a social media presence. What is also great about this market is that it's growing very fast. Internet and mobile penetration are increasing rapidly and the penetration is already at 72%. So how can your clients leverage this market trend to further increase their bottom line? What we see from social marketing is that it's actually got a higher average return on investments than all the other traditional channels of, mar uh, 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 of marketing. That it's, almo it's almost ex it's exceeded 90% on its return on investments and we see that it is the new and best way to uh, market their products to their, cl to their clients. So in analyzing which countries are most conducive for uh, the online, for social media marketing, we see that we've identified China, Thailand, Malaysia, and Singapore as the key markets uh, for your clients to target. And in analyzing these markets, we see that there are three key challenges uh, that face penetrating into these markets. Firstly, channel type, secondly, infrastructure, and thirdly, consumer behavior. And these three things vary greatly across all four countries, which means that there is a very thick layer of complexity for your clients to uncover in order to penetrate these markets. And therefore, uh, are distracted from, their, from adding value from their core competency, and, and therefore uh, require <laughs> your, the DK, DKSH's services. What you traditionally offer your clients is deep market insights uh, into the localized market, as well as the scale and the relationships uh, that you've established in these regions. And what this means, and what we are proposing, is that you extend the same service, except uh, extend it to the e-commerce uh, e service line. So how can you uh, how can you acquire these e-commerce expertise? We propose that you do this through an acquisition because this is not only in line with your corporate strategy as you uh, have done, uh, performed both on acquisitions in the past to uh, at attain expertise in markets that you currently uh, uh, have, have no present, that are not present in, and also that this is the fastest way to reach the market that is swiftly changing, which means that it is urgent for you to uh, enter fast. So from our analysis, we see that there are four companies that, have a, uh, that are a great fit for integration into DKSH uh, due to the fact that they have very sophisticated social media and data analytics technology that you can leverage to improve the sales and marketing uh, for your clients. And what this means is that you will be able to gather further insights about the consumer behavior that you can feed back into improving the social marketing for your clients, as well as be the full service provider uh, in terms of connecting your clients to their customers and also a strengthened leadership position. And overall, this generates 2.4 billion uh, Thai baht in net present value. So I've walked you through how you can integrate uh, e-commerce into your marketing and sales channels. Now Ronald will walk you through how you can integrate e-commerce into your distribution. Thanks Sophia. So our second recommendation is about how you can build out an exciting and revolutionary new logistical platform for the advent of e-commerce. And doing so not only push forward the development of the e-commerce sector, but also to actually bring about significant value for your clients in their expansion into the e-commerce market. But before we dive into the details of the recommendation, let's first take a more big picture look at exactly how this market is actually changing as it moves forward. 
So at present, what's clear is that manufacturers primarily inter in communicate with retailers in that they distribute their products to retailers and then it's actually the role of retailers to interface with end consumers and to make those final points of sale to those consumers. And so that means that DKSH has primarily been able to deliver its value in building that relationship between manufacturers and retailers. And so there on the slide indicated in yellow are the key value points that we see DKSH as currently being able to provide. But moving forward, what's clear in this new e-commerce market is that manufacturers are going to increasingly have to actually engage with their end consumers in that direct online sales but also direct to home distribution are both phenomena that require manufacturers to actually build up relationships not just with their middle point retailers but also with their endpoint consumers. And so with that, we also see a fundamental shift in the kinds of value that DKSH is actually able to deliver in that rather than seeing just retailers as your customers and manufacturers as your clients, and consumers also actually become your customers as people that you need to help your clients build relationships with. So taking that forward, we foresee three key challenges in making this a reality. So firstly, in terms of building consumer trust, it's clear that because DKSH is currently a business-facing brand, it's important that you'll need, out, need to build out your consumer awareness. In terms of innovating new payment systems, it's clear that in a market where online payment systems currently aren't fully developed, there needs to be some kind of pioneering effort to actually implement a strategy that works around the lack of those online systems. And then finally, in terms of the logistical challenge, the challenges that exist in Asia of actually delivering direct to home, those are all things that need to be worked around. And in doing so, we've identified a strategic spectrum of two key criteria. Firstly, in terms of making a choice between whether we actually take cash on delivery as a payment form or alternatively take direct online payments. And then secondly, in terms of where we have a more centralized product delivery model, as is the case at present, or if we go to a more direct delivery to consumers' homes. So placing the three key challenges that we've identified onto the slide. Firstly, in terms of low penetration of online payment systems. What's clear is that cash on delivery has to be the strategy taken forward to ensure accessibility to broad ranges of consumers. In terms of a lack of direct-to-home distribution infrastructure, it's clear that we need some kinds of centralized hubs to ensure that whilst we still offer proximity and convenience to consumers, we also offer logistical efficiency from DKSH's perspective. And then finally, in terms of actually changing consumer behavior, building consumer trust, and changing consumer habits, we need to minimize the sense of risk and the lack of familiarity, which is why we think that these distribution hubs need to be placed in traditional retail environments, and payment needs to be along the lines of traditional payment methods that consumers are familiar with. So putting a face to that general strategic direction, we've identified product delivery lockers as the ideal touch strategy to actually take this forward. So what are product delivery lockers? Well, in short, they're secure, temporary parcel storage. They're automated, they verify consumers' identity, they take payments automatically, and then they dispense products, which means that as a logistics provider, you simply have to distribute your products to these lockers, and everything from there will be automated through this machine. In terms of where these machines can be sourced from, we've identified Impost as the leading global provider of customized and modular solutions that can be implemented across a broad range of geographical and retail contexts. And then finally, in terms of demonstrating that this is a successful strategy and is a robust strategy, we've seen that Amazon has already experienced significant success in implementing a similar kind of locker model across the US and the UK with fairly substantial consumer uptake of distribution to these lockers. So given that pre precedent success, how do we take that forward in the context of DKSH? We see three key elements. Firstly, in terms of actually helping your clients to build out their online retail platforms. You need to partner with them to ensure that they have robust web stores and robust customer interfaces. And then you also need to integrate the Easy Collect, which is the brand that we're building around this locker system, implement that system and integrate it into those first party sales platforms. In terms of what Easy Collect actually represents, it's a consistent consumer experience across a number of different web shop fronts. So wherever you go online to shop, when you check out, you check out through Easy Collect, you start up an account, and you have your products consistently delivered to the same locker that is most convenient for you. And then finally, we'd also see that it's important to strategically place these lockers in leading markets across Asia, but moreover, in, mar in places where consumers actually frequent. So I've identified a number of shopping centers and convenience store chains across Asia that would be the optimal locations to actually place these lockers. So taking it back to the big picture and looking at what this actually looks like from a consumer's perspective, you go online to a web store, you purchase some products, and at checkout, you have the option of opting into Easy Collect. And when you do so, you're taken to a separate web interface. 
You have the option to pay online or to pay upon pickup. And you have the option to select whichever locker is most convenient for you to go and pick up that product. You're then communicated with on a regular basis until the point of delivery, at which point you receive a pickup coupon code. And you can then take that coupon code to the locker of your choice and pay through the automated cash payment facilities there and simply pick up your product. So what this ultimately delivers isn't just a cohesive and consistent experience for consumers of e-commerce across Asia, but also an efficient way for you to actually advance the logistical platform that underpins that experience. And all the while, we're delivering an MPV of 5.9 billion Thai baht over the forward projections period of five years. So that's our second recommendation about how you enhance and revolutionize the logistics platform of e-commerce. And what Pamela is now going to walk you through is how to take that forward even further into the after-sales services market. Thank you, Ronald. Our okay. third and final recommendation for you today looks, looks at how you can not only expand your after-sales service that you provide for your customers, but in the while doing so, being able to collect valuable consumer data, which will allow you to gain greater market insight and therefore further strengthening your position as a market leader. After-sales support service is a crucial element of e-commerce. A study by Marketing Metrics has shown that up to fo almost 40% of consumers value high quality after sales service. However, this is not the core competence of your existing clients. And a study by Roland Berger has shown that more and more clients are starting to outsource their non-core ancillary services, such as these after sales support services, in favour of focusing their attention on core competencies such as R&D and manufacturing. As a result, we see after-sales service as a crucial element of your value chain. Based on our analysis, e-commerce consumers in Asia, in particular, favour face-to-face -face support as it adds legitimacy to the online platforms that they're purchasing from. In addition to this, they also favour easily accessible returns, uh, returns program, as quite often they won't see the final product before purchasing. So therefore, we propose for you today to leverage off the easy collect lockers which, we're which we presented to you in our second recommendation and having trained sales staff at, ma at the major locker locations to provide this face-to-face -face interaction and all at the same time integrating a product returns po uh, program into these lockers. This will increase consumer sat satisfaction overall and therefore helping your clients meet their key corporate objectives. So how exactly is this returns program going to work? There are two methods for consumers to implement this. The first is in person, so they can walk, uh, they can walk up to an easy collect locker and the sales staff there can help, can help provide any assistance they may require and also help them process the return. The convenient thing for the consumer in this case is that they receive the cash straight away, which helps overcome some of the limitations of limited online banking in Asia. The second method that they can use is quite similar to the process that they order, if they order the product in their second recommendation. That being, they j go online and log into their Easy Collect web platform account and they start the returns process through this online platform and all they have to do is go to an Easy Collect locker to drop off the parcel themselves. So what this ultimately means for your customers is that not only are you able to provide them with after-sales support services that accommodates to the needs and wants of e-commerce consumers in Asia, but it also allows your clients to gain in, uh, valuable insight into consumer purchasing behaviour. And what it means for you is that you can also provide detailed market analysis by using the data you collect from this after-sales service and feeding it as a direct input into the market analysis and research segment of your value chain. And what this means for your company is that you'll be able to uh, gain greater market insight to provide for your customers, therefore further strengthening your position as a market leader. All this while adding 3.2 billion Thai baht MPV to your bottom line. We do recognise that there are some risks involved and the most significant one we perceive is the pot potential loss of reputation should you not be able to provide a consistent service across all your lockers. However, we believe that this can be easily mitigated by having a high quality training service for these sales staff and also implementing a mystery shop inspection program to ensure high quality service. Now that we've walked you through our three recommendations for how e-commerce fits into your value chain and how you can leverage off the opportunities that the e-commerce market can uh, provide you, my colleague Felix will now walk you through the underlying financial assumptions underpinning this. Thank you, Pamela. 
So my colleagues have given you a brief outline of the financial impact these three strategies will have. But what's actually driving these numbers? Well, when we look at Easy Connect, we see that primarily the revenue is driven by the increased sales of our clients as we are now facilitating this enhanced marketing services. The costs, on the other hand, are driven by the cost of acquisition and also by the cost of labour. For Easy Collect, we see that similarly, sales is again driven by the increased sales of our clients' products. And this then facilitates, through this distribution network, the e-commerce that our clients strive to achieve. The costs, on the other hand, are predominantly in the purchase and installation of these actual facilities, the rent, the logistics and the maintenance. Finally, for easy return, we see that the predominant revenue driver in this case is actually the after-sales service fee which we collect from our clients. The cost drivers are labour, logistics and the allocated proportion of rent given that they are also using these locker systems. Overall, this provides a cumulative NPV of 11.4 billion Thai baht and a year-on-year -year growth of 14% within the e-commerce market expansion service industry. Now our three key strategies have shown you how you can integrate the changing environment e-commerce is facilitating into your value chain so that you can continue to generate that trusted link between client and market. However, I'd like to finish this presentation where we started, and that is the actual vision of your company. The vision is to be a leading market expansion service provider and retain that leadership position with a focus on Asia. And this is facilitated with your three key value propositions, which are scale and scope, market insight, and entrepreneurialism. Our three strategies not only cater to these, but allow you to enhance them. Our strategies are scalable to the other business units and will facilitate further growth for your entire company. They develop an understanding of the new market of e-commerce and drive that consumer insight that drives sales for your clients. And finally, similarly to your founders who entered into Asia, the new pioneers are those who are entering into e-commerce and that is exactly where these strategies will position you. Those are our three recommendations, and we now open the floor to any questions you may have. I had a quick question. Um, so you're pl placing a pretty big bet on these lockers, uh, using the case study of Amazon, how they've been able to do that um, out outside of Asia. I'm curious to know, I mean, and then in Asia, that's, we're talking about very different places. I'm curious to know what risk do you see bringing that to um, here into the region? And how do you plan to address that? That's the first question. And the second question is in terms of placement of the lockers, how have you thought about a placement of the lockers uh, in the largest cities um, in, in Asia versus the second cities versus rural areas as well? Rural areas as well? Absolutely. Thanks for your two questions. So I might respond uh, to the first one first. So in terms of risk, the, the key risk that we've actually seen uh, is in whether or not clients, your clients are actually willing or reluctant to adopt e-commerce as a new sales channel. And in particular, that's because with the low uptake of online sales and also of online payment systems, it is a significant challenge to actually start building out this market. The reasons we think that this uh, risk can be circumvented is firstly because there are already numerous success stories of online e-commerce actually taking off specific to the Southeast Asian region. So there are competitors who have entered into the market in different ways and have sought to address some of these challenges. But what we're seeking to do here is to enter the market with a solution that actually comprehensively solves all of the challenges, specifically around logistics, specifically around payment systems. And that's a distinctive value proposition that none of your competitors in the e-commerce market can actually offer to their clients. Uh, in terms of the precedent that you mentioned with Amazon being specifically a US company as opposed to a Southeast Asian company, we've seen similar success actually replicated across numerous other continents. So whilst this hasn't yet been brought to Asia, it's been brought across continental Europe, across, uh, across the US and also across the Pacific through Australia and New Zealand and it's seen success in all of those areas and so we'd see that there is precedent and quite comprehensive precedent for that being able to be taken forward into a different region. Um, in terms of the second part of your question, um, which was regarding 
actually consideration of where we actually take these lockers. We've actually gone through a substantive research process of identifying various shopping centres and distribution major convenience store chains that we can actually take these lockers to. And so on these slides here we've identified firstly in Thailand the key shopping centres and convenient chain stores that we should be taking these lockers to uh, and there's similar pieces of research across the other three markets that we've identified. And so you'll find those in the appendices of your slides to refer to in greater detail. Thank you. I guess the follow-up to that would be, I mean, you mentioned the expansion into Europe, um, Australia, New Zealand, and the and, and US as well. Do you think that's actually comparable to an Asia? Very good question. Um, so in response to that, if we actually look at the reason that Amazon brought out their lockers in the US and also across the other regions, they were specifically targeted to consumers who weren't able to receive parcels direct to home, whether that was because they didn't have letterboxes, whether that was because they lived in condominiums. It was about enhancing that convenience and also enhancing the convenience in terms of not having to wait at home and wait for parcels to be delivered to you because it'll be sitting in the locker waiting for you whenever you need to go and collect it. So in terms of how that's applicable to Asia, we'd see that as being a fairly significant parallel in that right now it's simply not logistically convenient to be delivering these parcels direct to home, but by putting the products that people buy online in convenient places that consumers actually visit on a frequent basis, whether that be convenience stores or shopping malls, we're enhancing their convenience, but at the same time enhancing the logistical efficiency with which you operate. Um, I have a question for some clarification. Uh, when you talk about first party online sales platform for your brands, not sure whether you mean independent website for each brand or you do have your own brand which is integrated uh, for um, DKSH? Um, so I'm sorry if we weren't clear when we were presenting. What we mean is that you actually have your clients, their own web interface, and they have control over their own sales platform, which is online. However, we are integrating then the Easy Collect and Easy Return platform as a part of that process, which then takes them to a separate web interface if they choose to use it. The reason why we decided to do that is because DKSH isn't typically a client-facing organisation and we believe that your client's own strength is the face they have with clients and we believe that's why this will allow us to retain it. Then a follow-up question. Um, how about the smaller brands or not so famous brands that want to actually get the attention of the consumer but they do not have their own, own brand to attract the customers? So definitely a good follow-up question. We see that the actual marketing and sales, the increased product offering we're offering there, would be applicable. And then it would be a value add that we can help them facilitate that online presence and actually facilitate that sales presence so they can still have a successful purchasing platform which they then use and they control afterwards. So I, I see the conflict um, between the traditional retailing and your e-commerce. Because it looks like uh, you overlap the target market in mean, the same group of people, right? Because um, your locker can be collected at supermarket or department store, which is the same retail outlet of your traditional uh, retailer. So how can you solve this conflict? Uh, a very good question, um, and the very interesting answer is that in the US and actually in the UK, retailers have actually been clamoring to have Amazon lockers installed in-store on their sites. And the reason is because when you install those lockers, you have significantly increased foot traffic coming through all of those retail environments. And what 7-Eleven specifically has observed as one of the major partners of Amazon in the US is that sales in stores where these lockers are placed have actually significantly increased since they've actually had those lockers installed. And so retailers, there is actually a significant alignment of interest between retailers and between online e-commerce platform providers and specifically locker owners. Um, so there is no difference in cost and benefit, like no discount but to buy from e-commerce or to buy from retailer. So people will go to the retailer so you can touch the products and goods and choose to buy rather than from e-commerce, right? So to, to answer that question, what we are saying is that actually the e-commerce platforms are being used even when compared because they facilitate spontaneity as well. When you're surfing the train, when you're stuck in traffic in Bangkok, you have a chance to go on your phone and you can make that purchase there and you don't actually have to go in store. While we do acknowledge that some consumers will prefer to go in store and purchase their products after seeing and touching them, we believe that there is still significant value because of this spontaneity and this constant opportunity to purchase that e-commerce provides. 
so if DKSH would go this direction, like becoming kind of a digital or e-fulfillment provider, so that would actually suggest could be a back-end uh, provider for of these services, uh, whom would you see as the main competitors in this area? So currently, based on our analysis, we understand that you don't actually have many direct competitors as there aren't many co companies out there that offer the full suite of services as you do to the same extent as you, to the same scale as you do. Which, so, and based on analysis, we have also seen that there aren't actually any uh, market expansion service providers that have implemented a similar distribution structure such as our second recommendation, nor have they been able to provide the same uh, level of after-sales service support to their own consumers as we have in, presented to you in our third recommendation. So as a result, our recommendation, one of the crucial elements of our recommendation is to um, ask you to, so is for you to act immediately so you can be a forerunner in providing this full suite of, uh, of services across your entire value chain. If I can add to that response slightly, and uh, absolutely it's true that there are no direct competitors, but in terms of other major players in the broad sense of the market, there is one major player called e-commerce who's currently also operating significant logistics operations in the Southeast Asian e-commerce e market specifically. Um, but what we'd see is your unique value proposition or rather propositions is firstly the sheer scale that you have in terms of your distribution networks. They're a recent startup that's actually started in the last decade, which means that they're not able simply to operate as efficiently as you do in terms of logistics provision. But then the second point on that is also in terms of the breadth of their data analytics and their market insights that they're able to provide to their consumers, again, given the long lead time that you've had of 150 years on that firm, you're able to deliver significantly more value to your clients than they are. And so that's why we see you as such a worthy competitor in this market. Um, okay. I think locker business, I think this is locker business, right? You suggest uh, 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 DKSH to do the locker, right? And actually, Locker is already expanding. Uh, I think in Malaysia, in Singapore, and Thailand, they're starting now. Okay, I think some of providers they're talking with Thailand Post, and Thailand Post is gonna implement it very soon. And when we're talking about the Locker, what is synergy between the you know the new business model with the Locker model with the existing business with the DKSH? What is synergy between between the, between that? Or you, you just new one, okay, separately, right? So absolutely there are other competitors who are also entering into similar spaces of the market. But again, what we see as the unique value proposition that, uh, that DKSH is able to provide is that you already have significant numbers of existing relationships with these manufacturers and with these client side companies who manufacture these products. And so what that means is that you're able to fully integrate your product into their checkout process, into their sh online shopping experience and provide that consistent online experience in a way that postal services or other third party operators simply so as a simple example from there, if for example Ray-Ban were to implement an online web platform, you'd be able to log on and buy your sunglasses and at checkout you'd actually be able to opt to pay through this easy collect system and also to simply select which locker is most convenient for you. And the contrast there is if this was say for example Thai Post that was operating these lockers, you'd select that as the delivery address but payment wouldn't be integrated so you'd need to pay online rather than through an integrated system at the point of sale and also the web platform simply wouldn't be integrated because those relations don't exist. So in terms of value add for consumer, it's greater convenience and greater efficiency. In terms of locker, because in Thailand, I think, when, because I'm studying locker business model as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. Okay. Uh, to do locker is only for, you know, for the, you know, city area. That e-commerce in Thailand now is expanding to the whole, you know, whole country. That means when you need to reach to the people, that you have to expand your locker, you know, more. That means when you first launch, that means when you people buy something, that means you can reach out only people, maybe 30% of the whole country, right? And how are you going to cover maybe the less of that? It's a very good question. Um, and it's interesting because, again, that challenge is actually one of the core reasons that we've actually opted into this strategy. And so 
Looking at sort of much of rural Southeast Asia and how you actually distribute e-commerce products to those consumers, it's actually very difficult to deliver direct to home because if you need to establish logistics networks throughout every single road in Southeast Asia, that's going to be very costly, but at the same time, there aren't the substantial population centers in those regional areas to justify establishing those networks. And so what we're actually seeking to do through this locker system is to centralize and to make more efficient that logistics system because rather than having to be able to distribute to every single consumer home in every single regional area, you just need to be able to deliver to the 7-Eleven in the little town centre that exists in that village or to some other convenience store that we partner with as identified earlier. And so what that means is that you're able to cost effectively offer convenience to these consumers so you get the product very close to them but at the same time you don't need to incur the cost of delivering direct to their door. And if the 7-Eleven do the locker tomorrow, what are we going to do? So the first step would actually be having to uh, work with InPost to customise the lockers, which we do, uh, they do have the expertise for, given that they were actually the locker provider for Amazon, so they already have the technology to do so. So we have factored that into the timeline, as well as our cash flow analysis to when the cash flow begins. So that would be the first step, which is negotiating the arrangements with 7-Eleven and also uh, also working with InPost to develop the technology. Um, and then in the... InPost actually offers a full range of services, including installation, so they will then work with the 7-Eleven retailers to install it within their stores. Is there actually a salesperson that sort of sits with a locker as far as um, you know, dealing with refunds and, and that sort of thing? Is that, is that what you're proposing? That is part of our third recommendation. We do recognise that given the scale of lockers that we are proposing to roll out, that there is a cost-benefit analysis of whether you have a salesperson at each, in each individual locker or whether you only have it at the major locations. So the first step, uh, the first step that we are recommending is um, to have a salesperson at the major lockers only and then as, you're using, as you implement these lockers, you can collect valuable consumer data which you can then f uh, further analyse to see whether you would need additional sales people at other outlets. Will you allow, for instance, in, in the recommendation, in-store pickup as well? How, how, how would the in-store pickup feature, or will it not? So we do think that that is an alternative. Again, what we're suggesting is that the way this platform is integrated is that it's actually in the checkout process, so it's only one of the options. If we see that customers are actually demanding an in-store pickup, they can simply opt to do that in the options at the checkout process. So they can opt to, to pick it up in store or they can alternatively use our Easy Collect system, um, which is just going to be another option there. I find this a um, great recommendation and it seems that you would like to um, focus um, in offering this service to the manufacturer, right? Would you also offer the same service to your retailer um, customer? Why or why not? And if so, is there any um, refinement or variation in the offer? In terms of the future scope of this recommendation, that's definitely an idea and a prospect that we explored and it's one of a number of growth options that could be pursued. Uh, the reasons that we haven't actually incorporated that into our recommendation at present are twofold. So firstly, in terms of the nascency of this technology, e-commerce is something that's still very new in the Southeast Asian market and so in order to focus on getting that product offering right, we've recommended that you focus on a small number of clients and specifically the manufacturers that you currently work with. Uh, and the second reason uh, is in terms of the interests alone between your firm and your clients on the manufacturer side and your customers on the retail side. And what we mean by that is, given that you currently pride yourself in being able to provide independent, impartial and quality advice to your clients on which customers are best for them to work with, there's a potential conflict that exists in also providing paid and monetized services to those customers in terms of how you then provide impartial advice to your clients. And so that's something that needs to be worked through as a challenge. And so that's the second reason that we haven't actually incorporated that into our initial recommendation. Okay. Uh, I have questions on your financial projections. Um, I seem to be quite prof profitable in, in all the areas. Just wonder if you consider whether the sales generated from this e uh, channel is uh, substitute or, or cardinalizing or the traditional channels somehow. 
Sorry, could you just repeat that question? Uh, would, would the revenue that generate from this e-commerce channel uh, actually taking uh, from the traditional channels or would, would it be in, um, additional revenue generated? Sure, that's a good question. We do believe cannibalization is a potential opportunity. Um, however, given the differences in e-tailers, we don't think that this is necessarily necessary for the NPV. The reason why is we believe that those customers who want to buy e-commerce will buy e-commerce whether or not we have it or not. So, in fact, we will lose that regardless of whether or not it's actually in our strategy. So it's not technically cannibalization in this net present value because it's not an incremental change. That will happen regardless. If I can add to that response slightly, the other thing that we've also done as a part of our financial analysis is actually built in a various uh, number of sensitivities into the way that we've modelled the MPV and so one of those is in terms of the forward sales projections and the significant variability that could exist within those projections and so that quite wholesomely accounts for any potential cannibalisation of present sales and incorporated into the robustness of that Monte Carlo analysis. Okay, um, one more question, please. So, in in um, selecting which clients, uh, which clients that you would like to offer this service to, what would be your criteria to select the clients? So we believe that this is something we can offer a really broad range of clients just because the greater the actual facilitation of these lockers, the greater the economies of scale and ultimately not only does that help us but all the clients. Initially we think that it will be most susceptible to the manufacturers we already work with. Um, however, we have projected that there will be significant growth in terms of who wants to partner with us. In terms of selecting the clients, again, it's not so much exclusivity that we're doing the selecting and it's generally all profitable um, operations for both us and any potential clients that we will be happy to take on. My, my last question is, because I, I see your plan, you plan to, you know, to acquire some, you know, local company, but most of companies not e-commerce company. They are something like an analyzed company, uh, analysis company. Why you acquire them? Sure. Uh, the companies that we've selected is our data analytics and social marketing companies uh, that will provide the expertise into your social mar uh, sales and marketing, uh, so that uh, they can tailor their the your clients' um, portfolio and products in a way um, that it would be fitting for the local market. Does that answer your question? <laughs> Sorry. Because most of the company that you, 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 you're showing here, most of the company, they you know, too small, they know, they just, you know, just execution company, they don't have any traffic, they don't have, they just have a, a list of you know, people or maybe some influencer there. What's the benefit to the company? The benefit is that they provide the technology and the people, the staff, the experience that your, current, your company currently doesn't have. And uh, we understand that they might not have such large scale at the moment, but it's about integrating their processes and their knowledge uh, into your uh, value chain and your value proposition for your clients. That will be the last question. Thank you very much, Catalyst Consulting.